Hi, I'm Paul Brody. Welcome to my shop. Usually I say something like, I'm the fabricator, Mitch is the filmmaker, and that is true, but I wanted to tell you that sometimes I am a little bit of a filmmaker myself. And I asked Mitch if it's okay if we show a little, a little uh, segment of a video that I shot of Mitch riding his bicycle. This was over in Maple Ridge on a trail called Thornstar. And the reason that I like that video is because I can't do stuff like that. I like to have my wheels on the ground all, at all times. So let's start off with what's new. We'll go over to the cub and take a quick look, okay? I've got the forks on. These are the heavyweight forks and I had to do quite a few modifications to make them work. So I got the headlight mounted. I made this little alloy piece here. It's got an Allen screw in there. I made the space go behind. On top of the headlight mounts, there's a little alloy spacer in there. I don't know what, what is in this stock. It's really hard to tell off the parts, but maybe it was made out of rubber or something. So that's alloy. And then coming around here, I got the steering stops made. And if I turn, you can see how they work. See how it just touches the frame. And then there's a little bit of space right in here in between the headlight mount and the tank. So that worked out pretty nicely. We've got the dust cap in here that was made a couple episodes ago. And then I finished off the handlebar mounts. And then you see under here, I got little shims. I made little shims because the, because the radius in here is half inch for an inch bar. And these are seven eighths. So, so the shim started out as inch OD and seven eighths ID. And then I cut them in the hacksaw. So that's what's been going on. What we're going to do today is to make a mount for the Speedo. There's the speedometer. It goes up to 80 miles an hour. It's a Smith's. And that's going to get mounted right about like that. And I've been thinking about it. And that was part of the problem because for about maybe three nights in a row, I went to bed and I couldn't sleep because all I can think about is the Speedo mount. It was driving me a little nutty. So... Anyway, I've got a design now, so, so the mount has to go under here, obviously, and then it, it's going to come off these, off the threads here. Can you see these, the, these threads? So we're going to have something, well, it's like a nut, but it's not a nut. It won't have a hex, and then it gets joined by a piece of, of quarter-inch plate. This is the sketch I've been working on up here. So this shape in here, that's going to be the speedo mount. I think we should get started. We'll go to the lathe first. This is what I made. This is going to screw onto, onto the Allen screw there. And then what we're going to do in the lathe right now is to round the end. We're going to put a dome on there. And they'll sit like that and the plate will... It'll be mitered with an end mill, a 5 8 end mill, because that's what these are, 5 8 And then that's going to get a, a TIG tack, and then it'll get silver soldered. So we got a little bit of welding to do today. Lathe is next. <laughs> Anyway, that's what they look like. They're going to go like that. They're going to get painted black, so I think they'll be fine. Okay, I'm going to lay this out so it's a bit more accurate than a red felt pen. This is Machinist Blue. Comes in aerosol cans too. I prefer this. There we go. That'll, that takes a little, little bit to dry. So I've got the Speedo tube here. And I machined this yesterday and it's hollowed out a little bit. I made this out of this. Look how, look how thick wall that is. 
it saved me going to the metal shop to have to buy one one piece that's a few inches long so that's how much I took out quite a bit of machining there I filled up my scrap box a bit see this shape right here that's in red that's what's that's how that's gonna be like that and then this is the quarter inch plate and then we're going to also have some plates that come off of here so it's going to be like so that's an, maybe it's a little hard to see but there's going to be an, another plate that comes off of here we'll make it out of that i've got a hole saw which basically matches this it's a close match it's a little smaller and those mounts get silver sold it on and then there's going to be some risers that are made out of half inch aluminum rod and they're going to be maybe three quarters of an inch long allen screw goes in each side that's how the speedo is going to get mounted after a lot of a lot of tossing and turning my brain would not switch off I need to scribe the arc now because I've got the center so this is a really good time to scribe the arc so I've got my dividers it's got the carbide tip there and that makes a nice clean line like that and we'll do this side as well because that's where the hacksaw is going to cut that out and then we use the Ritchie grinder, the Ritchie belt sander to smooth all this. So if I did 5 sixteenths, see how I got equal space there. I want, to eat, I want it to be equal. And if I make a mark of where the center is, I'm going off these lines here. Turn it around. So that's the center right there. And then we'll just have to figure out the shape after this all gets milled because it, it might not look like that. Maybe it's straight across. That'll happen later. I've got a V block. I'm not using it as a V block. I'm just using it as a spacer like that so that the end mill can go right in there Let's take off the burrs and then I need to mark mark the spacing for the hole. I'll, I'll center punch it, I'll scribe a line, because then when I hacksaw it out, I can see what I'm doing. I'll bolt these together so they both end up the same shape, more or less. I'm using the Ritchie belt sander. This was made by Tom Ritchie back in the early 80s. If you don't know who Tom Ritchie is, Google him. He was big into mountain biking, I'm told. Okay, here we go. Notice how one, one finger is locating where I am. I'm not just in the air. One finger. Oh. Uh, I, 
I loosened the wrong vice. That's the, that's the problem when you're using two vices. You automatically go for what you know. Oh, that's getting warm. Basically, that's what I wanted. They're gonna go like like that and like that. So that looks okay. We're gonna work on on this piece now. I gotta figure out a shape. And then we have to have to drill those holes to the right size. Those are to add some lightness, a little bit of style. I know you don't see this much, but I wanted something that sort of blends in, that when you look at it, you go, oh, that looks fine. But nothing that really grabs your attention and makes you think, oh, that's, that shouldn't really be there. So. That's part of the trick of making something for a bike that al already exists. You want it to blend in somehow and not... Well, if you want to make a statement, you can make a statement, but that's not my intention here. I want it to kind of blend in. All this wool is going to be painted black, so that, that helps it to blend in. All right, so that's pretty good. So I'm going to use my other belt sander now. And it's going to knock off all the corners here and go around. I'm sure glad I got some belt sanders and different kinds as well because it makes, makes making stuff a lot easier. This is kind of mock-up here in a sense. So, see how they fit like that. And I guess we'll look at the drawing, make sure that the spacing looks okay. And then I can, I can tic-tac these on. See these uh, five-eight circles? I'm lining up these guys with the circles. Like that. And then we'll see where this fit. Oh, look at that, that looks. Spot on. That looks good. Okay, so we'll space this up. And then I can put a, a couple TIG tacks there because this is this is good. So that's what it looks like. We just have to, everything has to be silver soldered. Oh, I forgot to sand this, so I'll sand it afterwards. Not the best. And then we just have to make those, those little spaces that go in between. Then it's done. Then we're on to the side stand.
I could nickel silver this as well, but I just felt like silver soldering, so that's why. It takes a little less heat. It flows very nicely if everything's right. Oh, look at that. Oh yeah, look at that. I like how it shines and then it cools down and it solidifies, but see it's got the shine to it. And as it cools, it gets a little bit of a, a matte finish, I would say. Okay, so we'll, we'll go to the lathe. We'll make those, those pieces that are 1.3 inches long, the spaces. And then these can be soaking and we'll, we'll assemble it. That's what we got. We got a couple spaces and they got threads in each end. Let's go put it all together. This is a moment of truth. And to be honest, it took a little longer than I thought. I'm not very good for estimating how long things take. So we'll put it onto the bike and then we'll go on to the next project, the side stand. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Do one first and then the other. And that's how it sits like that. And that's where the cable comes. So there's room in between the headlight. See here, this is, this is where the cable is going to come. It comes down there. So there's, there's room between the cable and the headlight. And I can make this a little lower. That can get a little bit lower, but that's basically what it looks like. We're back to working on the side stand. I took this off. What's, what's handy about the cub is that the mount for the side stand, you just unbolt. This bolts onto the frame and then this just comes off. So that's basically what happens. And it had a little bit extra play. So I squashed this in the vise. So I took up a few thou there, maybe a bit more than that. But what's going on now, this is the, this is the pivot bolt. Can, can you see there's a little bit of movement there? Now this is also worn a little bit here. See there's, you can actually see the wear. It's 10 thou, I measured it. So I went online yesterday. If you need cub parts, you go to eBay. So I got the part number, I got it in. So for maybe 10 bucks, including shipping, it's coming out of England. This hole has to be made smaller, so I've got some, I've got some rod. This is 4140, so this is a pretty nice, nice bit of steel. So what we're going to do is to open up the hole. We're going to hold it in the vise. So that's the, hold it in the mill. So the first thing is, how do you hold something like this? This is going to be, this has to be level because the hole has to be perpendicular to it. So how, how do you hold that? How do you get a vise on there or anything? So I had to think about this a bit. So what we're going to do is I have a, a piece of aluminum 
the aluminum is going to go onto the mill mill table. This sits on top like that. Now I have to hold hold this down. So I'm going to drill. Let's see the you can see a circle. I'm going to drill 7 16 hole. This is 7 16 drill a 7 16 hole. Line this up with this and then I'm going to put a clamp on either side onto the table. So that's what's going to hold it and then I'm going to bore right through this and we're going to make the hole almost 5 8 5 8 is 0 0.625 so we're going to go for something around 600. I check my boring bar and it will go down small enough. So that's the first thing we're going to do and then I got 4140. It's annealed so it's it's still a good piece of steel, very nice. And so then this gets machined in the lathe so that it's a, a press fit. I'm gonna go for a thou press fit. In this size, that's a pretty strong press fit. And then I've got a 7 16 inch reamer. So it's gonna get reamed on the lathe. And then when I press it in, it's gonna shrink the bore just a little bit because this is actually 7 16 but it's undersized. So we'll make it work. It's going to be a lot better than... That's just terrible. I've got the drill holding, holding the side stand. There's a little bit of a space there under the table because I made sure this was long enough. Okay, here we go. Can you see in there? It looks it looks good to me. So we're gonna we're gonna take that apart and then we're gonna make a piece in the lathe that's gonna be pressed in. So one, so that's the right size right now. I've got a little bit of, of press lube here. It's when there's a, a good interference fit. This helps to stop any galling or seizing stuff like that. Don't need very much, just a little bit. Okay, I'm not touching anywhere. Oh, that's a good fit. Yeah. There we go. That took that took some force. So let's see how the pin fits now, even though the pin is worn. So this is used. Oh, look at that. So it's going to be a nice, nice, look at that. It's going to be a nice fit. There's no slop in that at all. Can you see how this is not in the center? And this side was way worse. This, this right side was up definitely more. So I'm going to show you how we straighten that. 
It's a very, very sophisticated way, I must say. These are my tools. I have V blocks and I have a crowbar. So this is what, I just want to bend that down and it's not going to take a huge amount of force. So this is how I, I did the other side. So I wanted to show you. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? I think that's good for right now. That's way better because now the bolt just starts. What used to happen was I used to have to press that down and then try and get the bolt started. And that was a, that was a bit of a pain. So this is a lot better. Okay. So what we're going to do now is to put the side stand on. Then we have to bring the bike down and check the angle. So it's, see that? It's got a little bit of wiggle, but almost every side stand does. It's very hard to find a side stand where there's no play at all, but that's a lot better than what it was. So. Okay, I wanted to show you on the rim, I, I haven't done anything to this. Can you see how it's kind of tarnished a little bit? And see those little spots of rust all over the place? You don't use an, any scotch bright because that's going to scratch the chrome. But I've got some, some steel wool here, and I just wanted to show you quickly what, what the steel wool can do. See all those little rust spots? If they're not too deep or heavy, it comes off. And then see, see the spoke here? See, see the little bits of rust? It's not going to be perfect, but it's going to look a lot better. And then I take this. Autosol metal polish. Put a little bit of this on. And it almost looks like brand new. There we go. Takes away the rust. Makes it kind of uniform. So that's what I'm going to do to both wheels. Just polish them up. Yes, it'd be nice to have brand new rims and stainless steel spokes, but this is a lot less money. Okay, we'll get the bike down now and check, check the level. Okay, we had viewers that were commenting and that they were saying things like, well, you have to allow for, if you're, you're looking at the side stand angle, you have to allow for sag of the bike. Well. One thing I want to show you is these shocks, they are super heavy duty. That's putting a lot of weight on it and they don't go down very much at all. So that's, that's straight up and down, right, right about there. That's about the balance point. So it does come over. And if we run that, if the bars go that way, that's okay. Here's the line we drew last week. See that red line? That line is, is, is parallel with the floor. So what I want to do is to take a little bit off here and then we're going to put a little bit of weld on that side and then make it fit and then we'll weld it on. that side right there. I'm going to build that side up right there. Sand it down and then we'll see how it fits. We can test that now and just see how that works out.
we had some viewers who said, if you're gonna you, if you're gonna get your side stand at the right angle, you gotta add sandbags to allow for the weight of the motor. So we've got uh, a 31 pounds here of weight, and we're gonna hang this somehow. Look, reef knot. Okay, so here we go. We're showing that we listen listen to our, our, our viewership. We got 31 pounds here. We're gonna look to see if the angle of the bike changes any. I don't think the bike moved. Here, we'll take it off and we'll put it back on. Did the bike move? I don't think so. So I've got an empty engine here, but this is more than the weight of the flywheels and the transmission miscellaneous bit. So I'm saying that this is good. All right, we're tacked, so I can take it off and weld it up at my convenience. What I want to show you now is exhaust pipe design. We're going to go around the other side. We're going to, we're going to talk about it, the, the header pipe. We're going to talk about exhaust pipes now. On the Cub, a lot of the Cubs had a high pipe, and this is basically what it looks like. Sometimes they went inside, but you had to have the frame that had the, had the kink. And this one would go outside because it doesn't have the kink. And then there's a mount here, which I took off. So that's kind of what a lot of Cubs have. Mitch is going to show you a photo of another Cub, and it's got a low pipe. The pipe comes down like this. Small radius, smaller radius, larger radius here. So I need to order some tubing and I'm gonna use inch and a quarter. I measured this, this is 1.3 or you can see it's inch and 5 sixteenths. So I'm going down a little bit in size. It's gonna make the exhaust flow a little bit faster. I think that's better. Some people like to put large headers on, like oversized headers. What that does is to slow down the flow. I'm not I'm not sure that's the best way to go. So what I have here, I phoned up the bender. See these cardboard shapes here? These are the bends that I can get, and these are the sizes of the radiuses. So this is, is, is two and a quarter, three. When they say three, that's to the center line of the bend. So these numbers are all center line radiuses. So what we're going to do here, we're going to look and see what, what might work. And I would say for this part here, we need the smaller radius. If we go for a three inch radius, that's really coming out a lot more. So we're going to start with a two and a quarter inch radius and it's going to get cut off right about, this is just going to be rough, but this, this is going to let me know what I have to order in terms of, of, of the bends. So I'm going to grab some cardboard now. We're going to make a straight section here, and then we're going to look at what might work here. And this actually looks like it's a pretty nice radius. So let me get a straight piece here. Once again, this is CAD design. It's, can, it's cardboard assisted design. So that comes down like that. It looks like it had to bend a little bit more, but, but the bend looks fine. Let's try the five inch radius here. Well, that could, that could work too. But I think the six probably looks a little better. So that could go like that. This has to bend. So I just wanted to show you the process which I go through when I'm thinking about an exhaust pipe and I have to order some tubing. I'm going to go to a Pacific Bending. I know Andrew there and 
he treats me well. He does nice work. All his guys do nice work. So. And they're in Maple Ridge. So there we go. That's, that's kind of what it's going to look like. And then I wanted to show you. On the, on the Cubs with the low pipe, they usually have an exhaust pipe that goes like that. But what I want... I want a little bit upswept. Maybe it makes it a little, little bit more modern. So we're going to have the pipe like that. It's going to come along here. It goes under the foot peg and then it exits right about at the rear axle. So I'll get that ordered up and then we'll be making pipes and we're going to make a muffler too. We're going to use fiberglass packing. That. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks for stopping by. Mitch and I like coffee. If you were to buy us a few coffees, thank you. Much appreciated. Take care. See you next week.